Okay, here we are. <laughs> okay, we should be good now. I was just talking the whole time with no audio. Lovely. But we should be good now, I think. Let me know if uh, we're still having issues, but if you can't hear me, then you wouldn't know. But it looks okay. I can hear it. We should be good. And we're on there, that's fine. Can I please drag this down so I can see? Oh wait, what if I just miss that? Nope. That's, why is this like this? Hello? Just, ah. Uh. Anyway, all right, how we doing? Welcome, gonna uh, unbox this thing. Focus, there we go. Um, before, before I actually unbox it, I'm going to talk a little bit about why and how I got it, uh, because we'll, we'll wait to see if some more people, more people join and, uh, yeah. So basically this is the Nisi Athena 50 millimeter T 1.9 E mount version. They have different, different, uh, versions. What would it? You recommend a bit rate of 13,000? Oh, true. Yeah, I guess I used to use like 8,000, right? How does it look? Does it look okay? Do I need to up my bit rate? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that real quick. Hold on. Setting. I don't think I can do this while streaming. I might have to do a quick pause. Stream? No. Output. Streaming. Oh, no, I can't. Let's make it. Wait, how many thousand? 13,500. Let's just 13,500. See what happens. That's what it, that's what uh, YouTube is saying. So let's go with that. Anyway, okay, chat's there. Okay, we're good. Stream health is good, but not great. Anyway, Nisi Athena 50 mil E mount T1.9. This does come in a few different mounts, and I ended up getting the. E mount version and I will talk a little bit about that because I kind of maybe should have got PL but then I would need to get PL adapters so that's sort of the main reason I didn't uh, but a while ago so like actually 25th it would have been a month ago today like the 25th of last month uh, the video went live I think was a video about the Nisi Swift hold on The Nisi Swift um, VND Mist Kit. I'm actually, I don't need headphones. I'm gonna just get rid of that. So, yeah, about a month ago, I posted a video about the Nisi Swift VND Kit, VND Mist Kit. And that was like a sponsored video for Nisi. Like, Nisi reached out to me and they're like, do you wanna, let's, let's do some projects together and. The, and they, they were talking about like, like they want to do multiple so hopefully we do more and basically they're like okay let's start with the swift vandy miss kit we'll send you that and we want this content and then i'm like cool here's a price this is how much it'll cost you and they're like okay since you mentioned because actually my like first reply i mentioned because i'm just like i've heard about nisi before i knew about these lenses so i was like i'm very interested in some of your products particularly the nisi athenas and yeah, basically they were like, how about instead of that cost, that price that you said, which I, I feel like I don't need to not say it. So like I, I said, well, at the time this was, this was, by the way, this was like two, two months ago. Um, I said a thousand us dollars, which is like 1500 Australian. So, and then, and then they came back with, how about instead we give you a, a lens because this like to me, like as a consumer is worth more than $1,500. It's like a $2,000 lens if you're gonna buy it. Obviously for them, it's not gonna cost them that much, but yeah, they, it's sort of, I think it works out for a much better deal for them because they don't have to actually spend any money. They're just like, here's this product that probably costs us way less to make versus how much they actually sell it for. So I was like, yep, we'll do that instead. Even that generally, I would recommend, and a lot of people recommend not accepting product 
as payment. I think, basically, I think this case is a little bit different. One, because the product wasn't the product that I was making the video about. It's not like they just sent me this and was like, make a video about it and that's it. Like I didn't just make a video and this was the payment. I did get to keep this because it was a sponsored video. They just sent it. I made the video about it and that was all good. But then instead of paying money, they sent other product, which I have, I do not have to make any content about this stuff. Obviously I'm going to, cause that's what most of my videos are about, are about gear and using the gear. So I'm going to make a bunch of stuff with and about this, but I don't have to like they, they have no say in, in what I do with this lens as of right now, if potentially we do another deal where maybe I get more of the, cause I would like to get the whole set of these. So if I end up getting a whole set and then they, we want to do some more videos, then, you know, maybe they'll have some say with that. But as of right now, they have no say with what I do with this and I don't have to make any videos about it. But yeah, generally I would not, I would, I generally try not to accept gear as payment. And what was I going to say? Yeah. So it's basically my, my sort of philosophy with it is if a company wants to send a product then, and like, I've actually been doing this. I've got a few emails recently actually, where they're like, you know, we are a company, we've seen your content. We want to send you some stuff. And I basically say you have two options. You can send me the product with no obligations on my part. If I want to make a video about it, I might. If I want to use it, I might. It might show up in future videos, stuff like that. But there's no obligation for me to do anything. You can't tell me to make any videos if you're not paying me. And then that leads to the other option, which is like, okay, if you want specific content, you want me to say certain things, or yeah, you just want me to make a video about this and you want to guarantee that it exists, then that's when I say we can talk about rates and we, you can, you can like pay for that sort of thing. So basically this is a bit of an exception where it was like, here's my price. How about instead of that price, we'll send you an expensive lens. And basically I, I said yes, because like, I really want these lenses. I want, I want like the whole set. And it's not something that I'm going to buy because, you know, if I had the money to buy this set of lenses, there's plenty of other things that I would buy first. I don't need cinema lenses as like the next thing I get. The next thing that I need to buy is like a storage upgrade, which is kind of boring, honestly. So it's like, yeah, I get this, get this new gear that I wasn't necessarily going to buy anyway, but I really want. So it's sort of that. Anyway, for those of you just tuning in, welcome. Um, actually, I'm going to really quickly share this on Instagram, I guess. Let's, uh, where do I, oh, where's the best place to get the link? No, it's not showing up there. That's annoying. Okay. Uh, hold on. Give me uh, two seconds. And then like, I'm actually going to start unboxing it in just a sec. Uh, where are we? Why is my own live stream not showing up on my homepage? Could do, could do vertical live streaming. Okay. Um, share copy link. Instagram and I'll just post a story, I guess. So, oh, also I am, um, I did also ask them to send a 77 mil step up ring because the fill thread on the Athena's is 77 mil. And because they sent me this and I got the 82 version of this, it's like, okay, well, can you send me a a uh, step up ring so I can at least use the filters on that. To be fair, I already have a 77 mil step up ring, but it's a pretty cheap one. And I imagine the Nisi one is significantly better because I have a Polar Pro 67 mil one. And, oh wait, what am I doing? Yeah, I have a Polar Pro one and I have a Pro Master one. That's the 70, 77 one. And the, the Polar Pro one's just so much better than the Pro Master one. So I'm hoping the Nisi one is gonna be at least significantly better than the Pro Master. Maybe it'll be as good as the Polo Pro. I'm not sure. But what am I doing? Oh, I'm going to take a photo. Nice. <laughs> um, okay. 
uh, where are we? Link. What? Hello? Why? You... That's so weird. Uh, let... Yep. Cool. No. Ah. Uh... Okay. We back. We here. Story posted. No, go away. Stop it. All right, cool. So let's uh let's let's start unboxing this thing. I'm I've <laughs> I'm so I'm so excited because I've been waiting this waiting for this for ages. Because actually, yeah, I will say the E mount version, right? To be fair, like all of the versions of this lens have been very hard to come by, even from the company itself. But I think the uh I think the E-mount has been like the most popular. Maybe they were having issues with production, but like, yeah, I was told that this one was like, it was waiting for production. So I was like, send me the one. Now this is the one with no drop, the E-mount with no drop-in filter. They have a drop-in filter E-mount version. And then they have, obviously they have other mounts. They have EF and X and whatever, those other mounts. And then they also have PL mount. And it was basically between this, actually, to be fair, I said, Originally, I said E-mount without the filter because I was like, eh, let's not worry about drop-in filters. Let's just get a good weather-sealed lens so there's no issues with it. And then I can use it on either of my cameras and I don't need an adapter. I'm now thinking maybe I should have got PL. One, because I probably would have got it earlier because I think they were not out of stock like these ones were. And to be fair, still are. Um, I don't know where this one came from, but the guy I was talking to at Nisi was like, yeah, I have one now. <laughs> I'll get it organized today. So I don't know if this was like came off the production line and was like, here you go. Or maybe it was, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, I, I feel like maybe I should have got PL mount just because like if, you know, like let's say in two years, I decide to switch camera systems for some reason. Like I don't, like when I upgrade my, my cameras, I don't go to, you know, whatever the next thing after the FX6 is, because that's sort of my plan. Whenever they have FX6 Mark II or whatever it is, that's sort of what I want to do. But if, for example, I went to RED or went to Canon, I can't imagine myself going to Canon, but if I did, it's like, well, then I have E-mount lenses that I can't use on those cameras, but if I had PL, I could adapt it to anything. So maybe I should have got PL, but I didn't want to have to deal with only having one adapter and having two cameras, so I wouldn't be able to just like swap between cameras, I would need two PL adapters. But anyway, also I have another, wait, let's do this. We have that, oh, that's a bit bright. Okay, hold on. Oh, no, wrong one. There we go, okay, we good. That is way too bright, let me just. Okay, that's still a bit too bright. Ah, no, that's not too bad, all right, that should be fine. So I have the a7 IV up there with the Sigma 24-70 on it, and I'm going to put this on that uh, in a bit. But we're going to open up and actually have a look at the lenses first. Actually, let me pull up. I had some notes that I was going to talk about in this stream too. So I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Ah, where are we? Unboxing. Um, did that... Did that? Oh yeah, well, yeah. No, I, I talked about that. Yeah, cool. All right. So, unboxing experience. We have the box, and the individual lenses come in a nice little, like, soft carry bag thing, which is nice. I can't really see myself using it all that much, but you no, know, not bad. If I got the full set, which I would like to get the full set, it would it'd be like in a big hard case with. Eight, wait, 14, 14, 25, 35, 50, 85. And then there's room for a 135. They also have a 40 millimeter coming. So they have a 135 and a 40 that haven't been released yet. But I saw they had, there was, it was like the UK like photography show recently and they were there and they were showing off the 40 mil, which I kind of feel like 40 mil would be pretty cool to have. I got the 50. I kind of feel like a 40 would be cool because it's a little bit of an odd focal length but, but yeah, like the case has room for six, even though the original set only came with five. 
But yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, this is so exciting. Okay. It's so heavy too. Like it's so much heavier than any other lens that I've used of this size. Like it's just dense. It's not big. It's just dense. All right. And in here that, what? Okay. There's like foam in there that I feel like should come out, but I don't know if it's going to. Oh. I don't know if I should take it out though. I feel like I shouldn't because like it fits, it fits well in there. So I feel like I won't take it out because then it'll be really loose in there. All right, bag out of the way. I'll probably, actually I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to do with like, where am I going to keep this if it's not on my camera? Because to be fair, it's obviously not a lens that I'm going to use for everything because it's all manual, right? There is no autofocus. So if I need autofocus on both my cameras, or if I need, you know, super wide or super telephoto, 50 mil manual lens is not going to be the way to go. <laughs> oh, what? It is the drop in filter one. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so what I just said before about the uh, drop in filter stuff, never mind. Um, I got the drop in filter one. I did not know that. So ba basically, yeah, so I told them, originally I said no drop and filter. And then at some point I'm like, yo, what's happening? It's been a couple weeks. I was told that it was going to be shipped out like, you know, two weeks ago. And I was like, if it's, if it's any quicker, I'd be happy with the drop in filter one. And then, you know, maybe that's a future project we can do together sort of thing. If they, cause they were, I think they are releasing new drop in filters and they have a bunch already. I don't know if they're releasing them, but they're like become available this year sort of thing. So I was like, if it's quicker, just send me a um, no drop in, a drop in filter one, even though that's not what I originally asked for. And then I even started, like, I think in my last like email to them, I was like, maybe just PL, like just PL, just like, if you have PL, just send, send it, send it to me. So basically how, actually, first of all, let's just have a look at the, look at it for a bit. Okay. Wait, let me, I'm going to turn off face face priority. So it's actually going to focus on here. <laughs> so it's like, it's so much heavier than it looks, but cause it's like, cause it's like all metal. It's just metal and glass and cine lenses do tend to be like that. So even though this is my first one, so I haven't actually used another cine lens. I've never even touched another cine lens, but yeah, I, Oh, wow. Wait, that's like, Oh, okay. Okay. So the focus, that's the focus ring hitting hitting the end. So because it's ma like fully manual focus, right? It's actual like mechanically moving the glass. Whereas with a, wait, I have lens, hold on, let me get a lens. Wait, while I do this, do you all mind if I just give you an ad real quick while I grab a lens? We're gonna see what happens. Can You can feel free to tell me like what happens here. I don't know, but I'm gonna insert an ad and just see what happens. I'll give you a few seconds to come back. Are we, are we good? I, do, I don't know. I've, I've never been monetized while, wait, it was going to, yeah, there we go. I, I haven't streamed while being monetized back when I used to stream ads weren't a thing. So <laughs> people just left. <laughs> we just lost two people cause they, cause they gave them an ad. My bad. <laughs> um, yeah, well, whoops. Sorry about that. I, uh, yeah, I don't plan on actually doing that regularly unless it's like, oh, I actually have to go do something. Then maybe I'll do that real quick. But <laughs> yeah, it looks like two people just straight up left. You didn't get that. Oh, okay. Interesting. Also, Destroyer, welcome back. It's been a while. I know I haven't streamed in a long time. Um, good to see you. You didn't get Yeah. Okay. So I think with the, like, because I, I manually like hit insert ad and... It's, yeah, not everybody will get an ad. To be fair, if you have premium, you won't get an ad anyway. So yeah, pr p people with premium won't get an ad and some people otherwise just won't get an ad. Anyway, with a cinema lens, right? This is all manual. The focus, like actually moving this physically moves the glass inside. Whereas, so like even with it not plugged into anything, this is like, I mean, to be fair, I don't think any power. Yeah, there's no, no, p oh wow, that is huge. Can you, can we get a light on that? No, hello, where's the light? 
There we go. There we go. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, so with this, it's like not powered or anything. Whereas with this one, this is a focus by wire. So this is like the old 85 milk. Can you focus on the thing, please? Hello? Hello? Oh, you're focusing on that. So focus by wire, meaning like I turn this and then it sends the electrical signal to move the motors, right? And because these lenses, you can actually see here, have those pins on it, which is how it communicates to the camera, which is how like autofocus works and stuff like that, right? With photography lenses, it's like not a big deal to have focus by wire. That's why they do it, because it's probably easier. But with these, it's actual, you know, manual control. It's also like absolutely like, it's got these markings here. So like, you're at, wait, what is that, feet or, hello? That's feet. And on this side, it's meters. Yeah. So on this side, you got meters. And on this side, wait, let's go. What? Hello? Yeah. And on this side, it's got feet. Yeah, so that's like one, one foot eight, one foot nine, one foot 10. Yeah. So it's got markings on it where it's like, this is the actual distance that it's focused. And yeah, because this isn't, let's actually take this off real quick. Oh, that's nice. It's like a nice like felt on the inside of here. So it's like nice and soft. It actually fits kind of snug, like that's not gonna come off. So let's see if we can actually see it. If I, no, okay, the front, wait. No, the front element doesn't move, but on the PL one actually, as you, as you move the focus, the, the rear element actually moves in and out, which is why these lenses in particular I'm going to turn focus back on for a sec. Which is why these lenses in particular can't be used with some uh, PL adapters or PL adapters with like a built-in filter inside them. So yeah, because it does, yeah, it's, it protrudes back a long way from the mount and it moves with the focus. Whereas with the, with the mirrorless version, obviously it can't because, you know, mirrorless mounts aren't built like that. So anyway build quality it is like I, like I mentioned it is heavy very hefty very solid it's yeah it's, it's clearly just metal and the ge the gears are actually a lot like rougher than i thought they're a lot more like solid is this wait is that focused hold on hold on i think what are we focused on i feel like it's the this camera back here is focused here why are you focused there is that gonna do it? What if I do that? What if I do this? Is that gonna, maybe that'll work. I feel like I'm too far off the side. Anyway, what was I talking about? Build quality. Anyway, filters. So, oh, I'll do the thing again. Ah. With the drop-in filter, as you can, wait, can I hold up to this camera a bit more? Yeah, it's a bit small. Basically, this button, press that and slides out and then I don't want to touch it in case that's an actual clear filter. That, there's a filter in that. So there's glass in there. It's, there's, it's just a clear filter. So there's actually nothing. Oh, I got to figure out how to get it actually back in though. Hello? Oh, it just goes in straight. That's what I thought, but then that's not what happened. Yeah. So drop in filter. So basically you get the actual, like you get the the drop-in things with the filters in them. So you can get like NDs, you can get polarizers, you can get, you can, you can actually get VNDs, which I feel like is pretty cool, which if I end up getting drop-in filters, I would probably get a VND probably like, which is the same as, you know, like the VNDs here, like the True Color one to five stop, they have a version for this. And then obviously all the like solid stop NDs and then also they have like diffusion filters. So like the mist filter that's on this, on this lens right now. So you can just drop in a filter on in the back rather than putting one on the front or like, yeah, if you're using a different system where you couldn't put, for some reason you couldn't put filters on the front or you could only put one filter on the front or something like that, or you only want to put, you know, a solid filter or whatever then you can put another one at the back. So I think that's pretty cool. 
Anyway, let's... Is there anything else that I should talk about before I actually start testing it? Because, I mean... Yeah, I talked about that. Yeah, oh, and then, okay, Aperture. Let's talk about Aperture for a second. Now, this has a lot more resistance than I expected. The Aperture Ring, or the, the Iris, let's, we should say. We're, we're, we're talking about cinema lenses, it's the Iris. So the Iris Ring has a lot more resistance than the Focus Ring. The Focus Ring is a lot easier to turn. And then this one, I mean, obviously it's not going to move as far. But, and then, by the way, it goes from T, T1.9, not F1.9, T1.9, to T22. And there's no clicks. It's not a, the clicks is, the thing is like the, the clickable aperture rings, right? Is, it's a photography thing. However, I like never unclick my aperture rings on any of my lenses. The main thing is so you, like if you, you want a smooth transi transition, so if you want to actually do like exposure or depth of field changes, it's not like click, 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 like you would if you were adjusting it on your camera. You can just sort of turn it slowly and like uh, you want to go from F, so you, let's say you want to go from T2 to T28, boom, you just got done one stop right there, just nice and smooth. There were no jumps, no clicks or anything like that. So that's the idea behind that. And then for those of you, Jet, welcome. These are sick. Yes, I agree. If anyone was unaware what the T means and why it's T, whereas this, well, actually, I don't think this says it on it. No, this doesn't say F. It doesn't say F anywhere. No, it does not. Anyway, so where you sent these. So um, I did talk a little bit about how I got this at the start of the stream, but basically I did a video for Nisi for the Swift system and that was like sponsored and basically I was like, here's what it'll cost for that. Like I gave them my price and they're like, how about instead we send you this lens? And I was like, okay, because I really wanted these lens and these are worth more than what I quoted. So yeah. And I'm hoping to get the whole set. I don't have the whole set. I only have the 50 right now and I literally just got it today. So yeah. And to be fair, it's really hard to get these because they're like out of stock everywhere. But anyway, yeah. So with T, by the way, if anyone was unaware, T stops are different to F stops, but they're the same, but they're not. <laughs> so an F stop, right? The number of, an, of the F stop and what the F stands for is the focal length, right? So the focal length over, that's why it's like F slash number. So let's say we're at, you know, F 2.8, 2.8 is really common. F 2.8 or T 2.8. Let's do it this way. It makes more sense for you to see it that way. I can see it the other way. We're at F 2.8, which means we're at the focal and we're at 50 mil, right? So 50 mil over 2.8 as a fraction, you're going to get a number. Actually, let's do it. Let's do F 2 because that makes more sense. We can do that in our heads. So <laughs> 50 mil over two, right? 25 mil. So the actual iris size, now I don't think you're actually gonna be able to see it. What if I take this off? Are you gonna be able to see that? So, right, the size of that hole, okay, the iris. So we're at F, we're at T2 right there. So that theoretically on, an, on a lens with an F stop should be 25 mil, the actual size of that like opening. That's what F stops are. The problem with F stops is they're not, they don't take into account you know, the quality of the glass or like what, where the light is going inside the lens. And generally F-stops will not be 100% accurate when it comes to actual light transmission. That's why T-stops are a thing. So like, for example, if you take an 85 mil, right? 1.8, and then I have uh, my 20 mil 1.8, which actually, no, I'm shooting on it. It's right here. What am I, what am I looking for it for? The 20 mil 1.8 and the 85 mil 1.8, the actual transmission of light to the sensor might be slightly different, even though they're at the same f-stop. That sh doesn't or should well, it shouldn't happen with t-stop lenses, which you know any cinema lens will be t-stops. Basically, it's rather than a measure of how big the iris is, you know, based on the focal length it's actually just a measure of light transmission. So it's like how much light is coming through the back of the lens. So it does take into account everything 
like the like you know if you're losing some can, why are you why are you focusing here come on okay hold on we'll, we'll do this for a little bit um t-stops what was i saying about t-stops <laughs> um yeah so if you take a 50 mil t1.9 and let's say you were shooting at t4 right you're shooting at t4 you switch to a 14 mil there's a 14 in this set you go to the 14 mil you set it at t4 the exposure should be identical whereas that's not necessarily going to be the case with photography lenses you might get photography lenses that are either the f-stops are just very very accurate or well even then with different focal lengths there'll be there'll be different things so that's the thing with with t-stops it's about light transmission not about the size of the iris yeah anyway let's um let's put this on a camera i, I want to actually see what this looks like so i'm going to get this camera down and actually i can leave it there I'm gonna have to unplug it for a sec. Hold on, let me get rid of get rid of that for a minute. We'll go back there. All right. And of course, it broke. Lovely. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I forget that that happened. That's so annoying. I don't like that that still happens. If I connect or disconnect one of my cameras it freezes the rest of them also i had a lot of issues connecting both my cameras today like this one's on the cam link this one was plugged in by usb i think the usb controller on my computer is like overloaded and it couldn't do both over usb and and, and even with the cam link it couldn't do both yeah it was just it was a whole thing anyway um uh yeah no i'll plug it back in so uh, luckily I have this five meter USB cable. So, so I can just uh, do whatever I want with, oh, that's annoying. Oh, I was gonna get, hold on. Let me just grab my little tripod. Get rid of that. Okay, so is this, Oh wait, real quick, real quick. Let's uh, let's compare. Okay, live streaming, and then oh, and it's gonna freeze. Hold on, that's so annoying. Okay, we're on standby. Why are we on standby? Can you go into output, please? It's not wanting to do it. Okay, because that's still frozen there. Oh, okay, we good there. Also. I think I plugged it into a like USB 2 port and it's limited to 720p, which is super annoying. That's why I have it so small. Oh my God. And that one's frozen as well. Uh, come on guys. Why are we doing this? Okay. So 50 mil. Let's put this on this tripod and we'll show you what 50 mil looks like on the Sigma 2470. So I'm gonna put this like over, over here, out of the way. That's way too close. You gotta put it back further. Okay, it's just like in my monitor. It's fine. Oh, no, that shouldn't mute anything. Okay, we still good? Yeah, we still good. Let's let's get rid of some stuff. I'm just gonna get some stuff off my desk here. Okay. <laughs> so this is at 50 mil. This lens, this one over here. And on, th th that's on the 24 to 70 from Sigma. Now, without changing anything, we're gonna put on, uh oh, let's take that off. I'm gonna switch. Oh, 
Oh my god, that's so like tight on there. Okay, wow. Oh my god, the uh wait, what? Are you serious? Damn. That there's way more um like it's like it's it's like there's a like, mist filter on there. Like to be fair, that light is coming straight more or less at the lens. But damn. <laughs> So also focus, like it's focused what, like here? So let's focus, I'm gonna move to like here. Uh, that looks about there, okay, that's roughly in focus. So, and what are we at? What, what uh, there's a T4, ready, let's go, oh, let's go up to <laughs> T19. Okay, and we do it, we're on auto ISO, so it should be adjusting it. So that's T19. Now to be fair, it's kind of hard to, really see so top right yeah so this this yeah this one that one there that's the that's the cine lens that's the uh the what's it called the athena you see athena so it's 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 annoying that i can't put it like further away because there's a wall in the way but if i move back let's let's well ah, that's the thing it's like i need to focus it and i don't act i don't have like a wireless follow focus system i don't have any follow focus system yet so but like the thing is, it's a lot easy. Like it's so much easier to get manual focus with a cine lens. Like there, like I, even on this tiny little, like I'm just looking. Actually, I'll, let's look at the uh, actual screen on this camera. Oh wow, we we're a bit bright there. Hey, um, let's stop it down a bit. To wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm gonna ISO 100. So I'll leave the ISO at like the lowest it goes, and then. We can adjust. Let's focus on me. Okay, and then this. The thing is, I can't tell what T stop we're at. It's so much. It's so much darker on the on the screen here. But yeah, this is uh, what it looks like. To be fair, like like if I just block right right there, the diff. Wait, yeah. Look at the difference in the the contrast. So that is something that I wasn't really expecting. I wasn't expecting that big of a difference from that light back there is like coming down and it is hitting the lens like fairly straight on. But like when I just block the light there, it, like you can see right, right here on look, don't look at the big camera, look at the little one <laughs> right here. It just changes that brightness so much because it's like ghosting or flaring like over the whole thing so let's see let's take this i'm gonna now to be fair this is gonna be way too close let's focus it at least okay this is minimum focus by the way i'm what how far how far is it hey, good thing about cine lens is it is it tells you exactly how far minimum focus is so we're at a uh, 0.5 of a meter so we're at 50 centimeters from the sensor remember like minimum focuses from the sensor and I mean yeah that's not too bad I don't know wait, what was I gonna do I completely forgot what my point was why do I keep doing this the problem that I kind of wish that I got a wider one just so I could do this test a little bit better because I got to be able to sit close to it or have it wirelessly controlled somehow or have someone else control it but yeah, so we go minimum focus. The thing, okay, what, what we'll do, ready? Auto ISO, okay, so it should keep up. I'm at minimum focus here. And then if I adjust the T-stop, adjust the iris, and right, we'll go all the way to <laughs> T22. And okay, you can see, yeah, the door back there is actually somewhat sharp. And then as we increase the iris or decrease the decrease I, I never know what to say whether it's increase or decrease and now it's like hella blurry nice um let's see if putting it up here helps at all oh wait hold on i'm gonna try and just put it on top of my computer here with no ah oh, the damn cable all right that's actually not too bad that, that should work hold on I'm gonna move this because I don't actually eat that anymore. All right, now I don't have to be at minimum focus. Uh, that's the iris. Where are we? That's 
Oh, okay. Focus. Okay. Focus piecing. Focus peaking works, which is nice. And yeah, one of the big things with cinema lenses is their focus throw is so much longer than on photography lenses. Like on this lens, this 7200. 7, no, this is not a 7200. On this 24 to 70, I'll go from like here, like let's say that, and then that. Like that's probably going to be like the entire range from minimum to infinity. And a lot of lenses like this, a lot of photography lenses aren't linear. So if you go fast, it will move it more than if you go the same distance, but slow, right? So it's dependent on velocity as well as, you know, just how much you turn. So yeah, what do we think of the, oh, actually this will be a good, good bokeh test here. Ready? We're at T, wait, I'll focus on me again. Okay, just here, we're at T uh, 1.9 and with auto ISO on T22. Wait, why don't I just go, I'll just go full screen just for a bit for this. So we can see that a little bit better. I mean, this is 720p, so it's not going to look great because this camera's streaming 720p for some reason. But yeah, I mean, F22 kind of almost looks like it's shot on a really good phone or a, or a camera with a really small sensor at like a really high, a really like wide focal length. But yeah, I mean, T... T1.9, 50 mil, pretty shallow, which I mean, nice. To be fair, shooting a talking head, like wait, actually let's go, how far are we? We set to like one point, so the focus is set to like 1.2 meters. Can I get far enough away? I'm a little bit, all right, hold on, a little bit too close. Where are we there? Okay. This is as far as I can go with the mic and still be in focus. So this is T19. And to be fair, like this is sort of what I would do if I was shooting a talking head here with this with this lens. And yeah, it's not too bad. Like my I think I feel like my biggest issue with shooting in manual focus is well in the past it's been actually nailing it like getting it right because it's like oh you got to adjust the focus then you got to sit there and be like oh is that good and you're so far away you can't see then you got to you know check it again and then i shot a whole video one time on my lumix g85 it was about my a7 IV. i think i was like doing a, a like camera rig video about the a7 IV, and i shot it on my g85 at 25 mil one f 1.7 and i focused on like the gear in front of me sort of thing rather than my face. So, which, which I mean, to be fair is not necessarily a bad thing. Cause you know, you want the like subject of the video to be in focus, but yeah, it was just like, it's, it's hard to do. Whereas with a cinema lens, you have a lot more finer adjustment and also with focus peaking and stuff, you know, chuck a monitor on there. You can see it a lot better or, you know, plug it into a computer monitor. Which, if to be fair, if I shoot in here, I usually do. I'll plug it into one of these monitors. And it's a lot easier just because you have that fine adjustment. You can move it a tiny bit. And, like, the difference here, let's, um, let's drag this back up. Make it a lot smaller. Can I, can I turn? I can't turn it. Where are we? We stayed F9. Oh, F1. F9. F1.9. And... There we go. That's... That's in focus, I get. I can't turn it anymore because this cable is uh, hitting. It's a, uh, ah. yeah, that should work. All right, let's um, focus now. Don't move. All right. So, what was I saying? I keep forgetting what I'm saying. Um, cinema lenses. Focus. Oh yeah, with the focus, manual focus. Is that what I was talking about? I can't remember. Does anyone want to tell me what I was talking about? I can't remember what my last point was. I was gonna. I like moved it over here so then I could see something. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, just in general, like manual focus is a lot easier with cinema lenses. And to be fair, most cinema lenses don't have autofocus so you have to do manual focus but having that longer throw like i think on these it's like 270 or 300 degrees 
which means it's going to go like almost all the way around or like three quarters plus the way around from, you know, infinity to minimum. Whereas with a lens like this, it'll be like, you know, like I said, it'll be like maybe, maybe 180 degrees, probably not even close to that, probably more like, you know, 100 or something like that. So, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the uh, big benefits of cinema lenses. Oh, yeah, with, um, with shooting like talking head stuff like this with manual focus. To be fair, when I actually, when I did used to stream, I actually, actually, this is a very similar shot to my, my shot when I used to stream. It was actually, I'm going to turn, hold on, I'm going to turn the zebras off. This is annoying. I can see, no, there we go. That, that was annoying. You couldn't see it, but I could. When I used to stream, I shot on that Lumix G85 and on a 25 mil. And because Lumix G85 was a micro four thirds sensor, well, I can look here or here. I keep looking at this one, but that one's bigger. Anyway, the Lumix G85 is a micro four thirds sensor, which is half the size of full frame. So a 25 is equivalent to a 50 mil on full frame. So it'd be actually a very similar shot to this. I had it a similar distance. It was off like, you know, over next to my monitor. And I shot it in manual focus because the G85 autofocus kind of sucked. So I would just shoot it in manual focus all the time. So if I like lean back like this, boom, I'm out of focus. If I lean forward like this, I'm, well, I mean, to be fair, I'm in focus here, but if I lean further forward, but mainly the issue would be like, I'd sit back like this. And as you can see on this one here, you know, my hands in focus here, but my face is completely out of focus because I'm just leaning back, which with, you know, a modern Sony camera and autofocus, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get Sony cameras even, I think even before I got the a7 IV, no, after I got the a7 IV, I still use the G85 as a, my stream camera. And I considered actually getting a ZV-E10 just to have as a second camera and as my main stream camera mainly just because of the autofocus and because I could use the same lenses as my a 7 IV. I ended up like not that long after that. I ended up just going with the FX30 anyway. That was more of an, more or less, it was kind of an impulse purchase. I wasn't planning on getting another camera, but I just got tired of using that G85 because it's just like compared to this, compared to the a 7 IV, it was just, it was not good. Let's go a little bit further. See, and like, yeah, just doing that little adjustment. And because I got focus peaking on, I can see exactly what's in focus. Because I, I can see just like right here in focus. And then if I move forward, oh, it's like right here. Just moves back on my face a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, so then with stuff like this, I know I move around a little bit. So I'll lean forward, I'll lean back, I'll, I'll move around. So that's when autofocus can really be useful in a case like this. So, you know, I always use eye autofocus on any video that I do when I'm talking to the camera. And to be fair, most of the time, the only times that I would turn it off is, you know, like, like I was before when I'm like, yeah, here's this product, you know, when I was showing you the lens, you know, and I can do that and it doesn't lock onto my face because my face isn't like the most prominent thing there. So basically what I'm doing there is turning off eye priority. And if I turn it back on, even if I hold the product up here, look, I hold this right here. It can see my eye, so it's going to stay locked on. But if I cover my face, it can't see my eye anymore and it'll adjust focus. So, yeah. I'm going to open the um, adapter ring. This is so much nicer <laughs> coming in a case like this versus even the Polar Pro one. Like the Polar Pro step up ring that I've got didn't even come in a case like this. Or is it? Oh. Oh, I need to cut it. Or I need to peel that off. Hello? I don't, I don't really want to peel it off because it's going to, what? It's got like lines on it as if, hmm. Let's see if I can rip it. No, I don't want to break the case though. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. All right, we peeling it off, I guess. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Look at <laughs> Bro, that is like the most unsatisfying peel ever. To be fair, it was a sticker, not a plastic peel on a shiny thing. But still, that sucked. You're welcome for that. Alright, can I open it now? You, no, you're still holding on? 
Okay, there we go. Oh, <laughs> and it's just <laughs> so it's just like a bit of foam. I don't know which camera to hold up to. It's just like a bit of foam that it was like pressed against the front, so it was held in place. So okay, this is very light. It feels very similar actually to the ProMaster one that I've got, which is not a good sign because you know the Pol like I said before the Polar Pro one that I've got is pretty good. Pretty, and it's pretty like hefty, pretty solid. Whereas, yeah, the Pol the uh, Pro Master one that I've got is not great. But let's da, 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 da. where's wait we don't focus it that way. The problem though, okay, with with focus like this, right, is like with the really long throw. If you want to get quickly from one to the other, you got to wind it a fair bit. To be fair, that's rarely a necessity in. You know, when you're actually using cinema lenses, like if you're on a film set, you're rarely going to be rack focusing from like really close to really far. Usually it'll be like, you know, from somewhere in the middle to somewhere in the middle or like close to somewhere in the middle or far to somewhere in the middle. Like it's not going to be from really close to really far. But now I was considering when I first like asked about the, um, asked if I can get a adapter ring. By the way, 77 millimeters, it says, right. Oh, right there. You read that? Um, anyway. Oh, it's, it feels like, like it's heavy, but it's like a good kind of heavy. It, fe it just feels solid. Like you wouldn't want to vlog with something like this. To be fair, 50 mil, you wouldn't want to vlog with anyway. But if, you know, if you got the, probably not 25 mil, maybe the, the 14 mil. I want to get the 14 mil. <laughs> Not that I'm going to try and vlog on it, but I really want to get the 14 mil. I don't really like wide lenses that much, but I feel like I would use that lens a lot. Um, what was I, what was I going to do? Oh yeah. With the, um, the adapter ring. Right. So I was thinking, oh, I already have a 77 mil, right? So why not just if, if I can get another one, especially since like, you know, I'll get an easy one for, you know, my Nisi lens and my Nisi filters. And then I was basically thinking I can just leave this adapter ring. Hello? Oh, we, we good? Oh, there we go. Basically, I can leave the adapter ring on... Oh, no. Don't do that. Can leave the adapter ring on... On this lens and then... Wait, I'm gonna... Uh, where am I? Uh, ball head, I guess. Uh. Yeah, so I was, I, was, I was thinking I could just leave this on here, and then it just, it just stays on there. So it's like, if it, if it needs a filter, boom, I can just chuck a filter on real quick. But, problem is this now won't go over the top of that. So, that's not gonna be a thing. The only other thing that I could think of maybe doing is like, putting the swift like putting this on right the <laughs> adapter putting the swift like oh it's on there never mind <laughs> putting the the adapter for putting the swift lenses on without the vnd because like if you didn't watch my video about the swift or if you don't know about the swift anyway this is not an ad i'm like <laughs> yes i did a sponsored video about this but it's this is this is not it this is not that video um basically the VND as a thread, just like any other filter, you screw that on. Or if you don't want, and then you can press the other filters onto that, right? So here's the four stop ND. Press that straight on, right? And then you have a five to nine stop. But if you don't want to use the VND, if you just want to put on a mist filter, like I have on this one, this is the one quarter mist, one quarter black mist then you have like a little adapter that's basically like a step up ring and then you just press on you know the other the secondary filters sort of thing right and i was thinking i could just leave the that adapter ring on here but the thing is i don't have another like front cap so that means the front cap would have to also stay on here because i don't want to leave you know the filter and the lens i don't want to leave the glass like exposed all the time so either i could get another front cap and then I could do that, and that would probably work. Or I just don't leave the 
filter thing on and then it's like I only, I just screw it on when I need a filter, I guess. Which I was, I was hoping I could like find a way to like sort of save time so I don't need to do that because, you know, I only have 82 mil filters so it makes sense to leave, you know, step up rings on these lenses except for the fact that the uh, caps don't work then. Well, the caps don't fit. So that's not a deal. But yeah, here's my other 77 to 82 mil. So this is from ProMaster. Wait, can we, wait, are we at, where's minimum focus? Where is it? There, not that you can actually read that because this is 720p and it's like taking up an eighth of the screen. But <laughs> let's focus. But yeah, so this is from ProMaster. I got this, when did I get this? I think, oh, when I got my Polo Pro Recon. I keep, I keep wanting to like get up and get things, but uh, don't worry about it. I have Polo Pro Recon. That was my first VND. I went for ages without getting, without having any filters, let alone VND or an, or an ND at all. And I got the Polo Pro Recon, which is a VND and like a matte box system, but it's like not a proper matte box system. So you, you can't put four by five filters in. It's actually quite similar to like the Nisi Swift fil filter system, except this just doesn't have a matte box. You just press all the filters on. And to be fair, I think this system's kind of better in most ways because you can stack more than just two filters on. Whereas with the Recon, you put the VND on or the base and then you can put one secondary filter on the front. That's it. Whereas with these ones, you can just keep stacking them if you want. Like put the VND on, put another VN, put another solid ND, put the mist filter on, put a polarizer on. I don't know why you'd do all of that. I mean, to be fair, at some point you'll start getting a bunch of vignetting, but I feel like the Swift system's a bit more versatile. But my point with all that was I have the the recon system and I could maybe leave the recon on here just so then it's like, ah, oh, matte box on my cinema lens. But that being said, it's not, like I said, it's not a proper matte box. I haven't, I don't think I've had a situation where I need a matte box more, more so I just need filters like matte boxes, proper matte boxes can, they can be actually quite useful, like beneficial, for example because you can more easily change lenses. You just like swap out, you know, the, the trays, the like the four by fives, uh, four by five, four by five, six, four by five point six five or something, whatever, whatever the, um, the number is, um, or like one by one or, or four by four, whatever that, whatever the, all the filter sizes are. But you just put in those like slight slide in filters, which I actually kind of want to get, if Nisi ends up seeing this, the, uh, the C5 matte box system. Uh, do a video on that. You could send me another lens as well. Just, just saying. <laughs> or another few lenses maybe. Um, but yeah, like that would be something that, to be fair, I wouldn't even have to leave on here because then you would then just put the, because that comes with like basically a step up ring for the matte box, but it's a clamp on matte box. So rather than it being like you screw this on and then you can then screw something else on. You screw that on and it like goes over and around the lens. Like it goes like, wait, I'll show you here. It goes, it screws on, right? But it, it sticks over around the outside here. And then the matte box will just clamp on like that around that like adapter. Yeah, adapter, yeah, adapter. Yeah, so that, you could like leave that, Ooh, to be fair, you could probably just leave the matte box on if, if you have one lens that, well, this is really not straight at all, is it? <laughs> not even close. Let's, um, oh, hello. All right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so you could do that. But yeah, I don't have that at the moment. Waiting on, uh, Nisi to maybe send it to me. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see. But yeah. Anyway, really excited about this. Um, I have. I actually literally like in the time that I was waiting for this to not even arrive to be sent. This got sent on like Friday, and it's Monday right now. So 
I've noticed getting getting stuff sent from Nisi's been real quick because like when this got shipped, it was real quick as well. So they're really good at shipping, but if something's not in stock, it can be it can uh, take a while. But yeah, I want to get the rest of the set, and then it's just like then I just have like a full set of cine lenses, and that's and that's good. Like that's it. Like I don't. Other than that, I want I I, I, I want to get a. I still want the 50 millimeter G Master 1.2, like having a nice 50 mil wide aperture autofocus lens, I think would be really beneficial. Um, and then I also want, I want to get anamorphics as well, but they're expensive. Like the Viltrox um, Epic, they look really cool. They're the big white ones and they like look really nice, but they're 1.33 times squeeze which not many anamorphics are, but 1.33 is great for Sony cameras that don't have open gate, which is all of them because, well, Venice can shoot open gate. The Burano can't even shoot open gate. That's what I, I find crazy that the Burano can't even shoot open gate. But because these cameras can't shoot open gate, a like two times squeeze anamorphic is gonna make it a 32 by nine, which is insane. It's like a, th oh, what is it? Like a 3.6 to one, 3.7 to one or something like that. But a 1.33 times squeeze on a 16 by nine image is uh, 2.39 or 2.35, which is like a cinemascope. So a 1.33 times squeeze on an anamorphic on, you know, a 16 by nine image out of these cameras would be a perfect for cinematic footage. <laughs> but yeah, they, that's sort of like the lenses that I would want to get. The, yeah, the Trucks anamorphics. The Viltrox Epic Anamorphics. And yeah, obviously like this full set. I really want the 14, like I mentioned before. The 85 and the one and the new 135. And actually the new 40 mil. I feel like I would probably use more than a 50. Because yeah, 50... Uh, to be fair, this is actually the first 50 that I've ever had. Not that I've had many... It's not like I've had lenses and then gotten rid of them. Like I sold one camera because I had other ones. But one thing the, like the reason that i got the 50 is because like the 50 was the next lens that i was wanting to get for like like the g master right that was that that's actually been the next on my list like all the like forever like literally like when i got the 85 that i put back over there when I got the 85, I got the 85 because I was like, I literally only had a 20 at this point, right? This is just after I got my a7 IV. I had a 20 mil, 20 mil here that I'm shooting on. And I wanted to get the Tamron 13 to one, at uh, 13, 35 to 150, which I've heard phenomenal lens. But it's like, a, it was like a $2,700 lens. So it's like, okay, it's going to be a while before I have enough save to get that. How about I get this $600 lens you know, to hold me off until like, you know, forward a 50 or a, you know, 7200 or a 35 to 150, All right? So I got the 85 and then it's like, I had 20 and 85. Yeah, not too bad. I can, you know, have wide and I have telephoto, nothing in between, which was a little bit annoying. And yeah, it was like, that was sort of to hold me off until I could afford a 50 or something else. And then the next lens I got was the 7200, which I was actually, when I got that, I was debating getting the 50 mil G Master 1.2 or the 7200. And I ended up going with the 7200 because I was shooting a little bit of like sports photography at the time. So it actually helped. Whereas like a 50 mil, yeah, it would have been cool, but like it's the 85 still would have been better for a lot of that. So yeah, I ended up going with 7200. And to be fair, I love the 7200, it's a great lens. I use it a lot. I just, it's just like, for, you know, even the 50 like this, like it's, it's too tight. Like for, if you, if you're close to the camera, you can't get away with a 7200. I'm gonna, we're gonna change this. Let's go to F, uh, T, aha. I gotta get used to saying T instead of F. <laughs> because cinema lens. All right, so this is at T4. Yeah, T4, All right? ISO's a little bit higher now. But it's a lot easier to stay more in focus. I might actually also do something about that light because that light you can still see is like hitting, right? Like, oh wow, like the ghosting on that, that's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> I really like, ah, oh, that's so cool. 
not that you can see this, but I'm just looking like straight down the barrel of the lens and just like as I close the aperture, just seeing the aperture blades just close. How many blades are there? I wonder if I can count the blades. Can we can we count the blades? I feel like it's better like there to count. What's that? Like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? I feel like ten would be a weird number. Maybe like eleven or not or nine. I feel like I feel like eleven might be a more accurate. Um, oh wait, anyway, I was gonna go like T four, right? All right, T four. Um, yeah. Does anyone who's here have any questions about this lens or about? Maybe I shouldn't have the lens like the lens that I'm talking about hidden by the image from the lens. What if I just put this over here? Is that does that work? Ah, oh, but that's on that side. Wait, hold on. What if I do this? Let's do this. Let's. Does that work? No, but then you can't really see it, hey? Ah, but then I'm um, breaking all the rules, shooting on the near side. Gotta shoot on the shadow side. Oh, that looks so weird. Yeah, this is why we don't shoot on the near side. <laughs> it's always shoot on the shadow side. It looks so much better. Yeah, but the background over there is not as good, though. What I could do... What I might do, actually, hold on. I'm going to swap. Let's do this. I'm going to swap lenses with the 20 mil that's right here. So give me, give me just a second. Do you mind if I send you to an ad break? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that again. Two people left last time. I did that. I also don't know whether it's worth it. Like sending, like inserting ads. Like. Like is is well, okay. This is just pointing right at my face here. Um, like if I send an ad break, let me let me just swap these lenses real quick. Forbidden broken rule. No, yeah, no, I'm not. Oh my, it's so tight. Why is it, bruh? That's like very. It's way firmer of a like of a mount. Cook it. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't. I won't. It's fine. Um, Wait, are you talking about ads? Or are you talking about um, shooting on the shooting on the near side? Um, anyway, let's. This works. Wait, what? That works. That works. This. What? What are you talking? I have no idea what you're talking about. This works. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's swap this lens, and we can see it on the. So this is gonna be on the FX30. Now, these are full frame lenses. I say these these lenses like I have multiple. This is a full frame lens. <laughs> so on the FX30 being a, oh, the camera. Oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, what was I saying? How do I keep losing my train of thought like this? Um, yeah, full frame lens. All my lenses are full frame. I literally have no APS-C lenses. But the FX30 is APS-C or Super 30. Well, yeah, it's APS-C. Super 35? It's APS-C. And that means it, that this will be more of an equivalent to a 75 mil field of view on full frame. So let's go T2.9. Well, let's, let's try and estimate, see if we can get perfect focus. Ready? Okay, so I reckon from there, I'm like, I've got to be like exactly a meter, right? I'm going to set it. Ready? You can see here. Ready? I'm going to set it to a meter. I'm going to hide. So. Wait, that's the app. That's the iris. Okay, that's going down. So let's set it to one meter. No. I got my eyes in it. You see that? Okay, we're right on one meter. Like right, right here. We're at one meter. And that's 1.2. And that's... 0 0.9 we're gonna swap with this 20 mil so don't look at the big camera look at the little camera for a second I'm gonna go real bright although why is it not I'm surprised it's not just like white hello oh okay okay did we nail focus not even close. <laughs> did I adjust it while I was... Oh, I did. I moved it while I was turning it. I probably did have it right. 
All right, that's a meter. I actually did have it pretty close. Probably nailed it, but now I'm too, like... Wait, wait. Now I'm too... Why do you somehow look like... Kevin... Okay, I don't know who Kevin De Bruyne is, but multiple people have told me I look like him, so I looked him up one time, and I was like, okay, fair enough. Wait, no. Not... No, Kevin... Hold on. He's, he's like a football player, right? So... On... I had, I had a couple of videos... Wow, this looks ridiculous, doesn't it? <laughs> it's so far away, I'm so low. What if, what if, okay, how do I, how do I do this? How do I, I can angle it up a bit. I'll, wait, let's just, I'm just gonna sit further back. So, I, um, yeah, so I had a couple of videos that, actually, while, uh, yeah, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna put a mist filter on, just see what, see what happens. So, I had a couple of videos that were, they were like the crash sim videos. I don't know if you've seen uh, those. Videos. They went like a little bit viral on uh, like TikTok and Instagram. Like uh, on TikTok, like one of them got like 1 million views and one of them got like three and a half million. And then on Instagram, the other one got, oh wait, I can just leave that on. Got like 3 million views or something like that. And a bunch of people commented on that one about my friend who I was, shooting who's like in the in the shock so shooting for his company and his face was in it and p people were commenting about him looking like kevin de Bruyne. and people have told me i look like someone like McAllister or something i think is his name who is a another football player but i need to go further away oh damn it at least it's easy to oh, it's so much better to adjust <laughs> <laughs> on a cinema let wait no oh, no that's too far ah my mic can't go that far hold on what about there are we good there all right i can sit here wait is peaking not on this oh i need to be like here that's super annoying it's like i need to be <laughs> um anyway wait let's compare so 50 mil. This is 50 mil on APS-C. This is 50 mil on full frame. But we can we can actually compare. Ready? This is now 50 mil. Wait, did that change? Yeah. This is 50 mil on APS-C as well. So if I actually put these cameras next to each other, they're not going to be perfectly next to each other. This one's going to be slightly closer. And also I can't, okay, damn it. Can I just, okay. This one's a little bit closer, but 50 mil on each. Still too far away. Uh, yeah. I don't know what the, what, uh, what the point of that is. I'll do, I'm going to do like videos on all of this stuff. And actually that was one of the things that I had written down to talk about which was like the videos that I had planned. I'm gonna, uh, where are we going? Closer. <laughs> it's, uh, it's way too close. It's way too tight. Like it's just like, yeah, imagine I got the 14. Can you, see, can you send me the 14, please? This would have been a lot easier to do testing on the 14 than the 50 in this particular setup. Anyway. Um, basically, for those of you who are not here, all these close-ups, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, I'll just, yeah, right here, this isn't even minimum focus, I can go a little bit closer, um, also I did put the Swift, the, the Swift, uh, one quarter mist filter on here, which, to be fair, you probably can't really tell much now, although, uh, that light might be kind of hitting it, anyway, what I plan on making with these lenses... Oh, yeah, that's... I was going to say this before. Why didn't I say this before? Okay. Um, <laughs> this is such an awkward position. Can I... And that's too... Anyway. Um, yeah. So, in the time that it took to send... Wait, what if I sit down like this? No, too far. Hold on. This is so difficult. 
Wait, that's going closer. That's the wrong way. Let's go like there. Oh, my chair can't go any lower. Damn it. Wait, but I could. Ah, oh, I'm a genius. I have a standing desk. I can just raise my desk up. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we. F oh, no. We figured it out. We got it. Nice. This is ridiculous. Wait, let's put the 20 mil on this one because it'll be a little bit wider than the 24. Oh, we're down to 17%. Calm down. Down to 17% battery on the, the FX30. So I'll probably end the stream up around the time when that's getting about close enough to die. Anyway, I keep getting interrupted by like myself, but the yeah in the time that i was waiting for this to be shipped um i wrote a like little short film sort of thing that i want to shoot and i was like i want to shoot this on the athena 50 mil because it's like you know first cinema lens and you know i wanted i want to just shoot it all on one lens to see if i can shoot everything at a 50 because i've never had a 50 before i have the 24 to 70 but like it's too easy to just change focal lengths so I want to shoot everything on this lens, either on the FX30 or the SM4, I haven't decided yet. I'll see, I'll like have a bit more of a think about the exact shots because I've like shot listed everything. I wrote it out, I was like, I want to do this. I wrote it, I shot listed it. I've done like everything. I don't need anything for it. I'll just do it in my, in my, in, like in my house and I'll just have like one of my housemates like act. Cause I don't really want to act in it cause I want to shoot it. I mean, I could, it would just be a lot harder to shoot. To be fair, every shot I'm pretty sure is more like could just be on a tripod, so I probably could shoot it myself. But focus would be a be an issue because no water focus. Anyway, yeah, I like wrote this little like short film that I want to do with this lens, but then like weeks ago, and then finally I'm getting this lens. So hopefully I can shoot it in the next couple weeks. Um, probably not going to shoot it this week because I don't have much time. This week I gotta finish gotta finish next week's YouTube video. And yeah, and then actually this weekend, it's Easter, I'm going going uh, to my parents' place. And I'm gonna take this lens and prob I think what I'm gonna do is basically like anything I shoot, unless it's of the lens, I'm gonna shoot with the lens. Like I'm gonna shoot this. I'm going to shoot everything that whole weekend is like four, it's a long weekend, four days, everything in that four days that I shoot, unless it includes the lens in the shot is going to be shot on that lens. Cause I really want to, I really want to use it a lot and get used to it so I can like understand it really well. So then when I make, you know, multiple videos about it, then, you know, I can, I actually understand it well sort of thing. So yeah, but yeah, this short film, it's, 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 it's like a very short film. Like it'll, it'll probably be like a minute long. Um, but yeah, like I, I wrote it cause it was like, oh, I had this idea. I want to shoot it. And I didn't want to just like shoot it on 24 to 70. I was like, yeah, you could do that. So it like to prove that oh, yeah, anyone can do it. But I want to shoot it on a cinema lens cause I knew I was getting a cinema lens. So yeah, but finally I'll be able to do that. But yeah, like I said, it's not going to be, not going to be at least until next week that I even shoot it and then it'll probably take me a little bit to edit because, and then I'll also that that will be a whole like YouTube video in itself because it'll be I'll do the behind I'll have someone shoot behind the scenes as well so there'll be like a full behind the scenes last time I did a spec shoot I don't think I put I think I posted on my actually I think I did post on my on my Instagram because I think I posted on my like my business Instagram and then I think I like collab like tagged myself as a collaborator so i'm pretty sure it, it was on my instagram it was like the the soda stream ad when i shot that i had someone shoot behind the scenes and i didn't end up posting a full behind the scenes video even though i planned to like i planned on shooting the behind the scenes for a specific video but i didn't end up doing that because i just went through the behind the scenes it's like ah there's not really a story here there's not like it's too long to just like put out all as one i have used it a bunch as b-roll in other videos but yeah i just never I didn't really like the behind the scenes as one whole thing, but I want to try like in the future because I really like behind the scenes content, like watching it 
and then yeah of course making it so i want to when i shoot this you know next like little short film thing i want to have behind the scenes done and it's like a full video like that is the youtube video is just behind the scenes like maybe i'll do a little bit of talking beforehand or after or whatever and i'll show the short film like the final product but i want like a proper behind the scenes video of it i have some other like ideas that i want to shoot um with this i have a bunch of videos that i want to make about this lens and i'll tell you now because they're like the seven of you that are here and you know the three others that'll watch later <laughs> unless i don't know unless a bunch of people watch this after the fact it's like gonna be like an hour and a half stream but I'm going to tell you, you, <laughs> um, basically I want to do, obviously I'm going to just going to do like a regular overview of this lens. It's like, here's this lens. This is what I think about kind of basically a review. I don't know if I'm going to call it a review. Cause like, like I didn't get sent it for that video. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to call it a review. Like I, but the thing is I didn't buy the lens and I didn't get, and I didn't get lent the lens. I got sent the lens as payment for another video, which I talked about at the start of the stream, if you're confused about that. But I want to do, yeah, I want to do an overview of the lens. I want to do an overview of the whole set, but I don't have the whole set. So I don't know, maybe that's a future thing when I figure some stuff out with Nisi. But wait, that's not, no, it's not too bright. Yeah, what am I talking about? Um, I also want to do a photo lens versus cine lens video, which would be great if I had a 50 mil photo lens, or if I got the 85 cine lens and then I could compare it to the 85 that I've got back there. Wait, I might even just wait, uh, do that. I could just do that and then we'll go here. Yeah. Nice. And I'm going to go back a little bit further. Wait, no, that's going forwards. Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm going to do overview about the lens. I'm going to do a photo versus cine lens video. And then I'm going to do, I want to do, like, I've had this idea for a while, but I haven't had a 50 mil to, to like, have in the video and really do the, the tests sort of thing that I want to do. And it's just going to be a video about 50 millimeter. Like, why is 50 millimeter so common and so popular? And I want to, like, really explore that in a video. So I want to do a video about that. So now I have two lenses that can do 50 mil. I have this 24 to 70. And of course, now I have the Athena Prime. I want to do a video about follow focuses, but that'll be when I get a follow focus. I'm thinking I'm just going to get like a, like a pocket, like a tilter. Can you calm down, please? A, um, yeah, I'm thinking of getting a, a tilter pocket follow, fo pocket follow focus, which is just one of the ones that just goes onto a rail and then you put it straight on and then it's like attached to the gears. So the gears would go onto the lens and then you turn the knob that's attached to those gears. Down the line, I would like to get a wireless system like the Tilter Nucleus Nano 2. So then I could, you know, have the motor on there. I can have the, you know, controller in my hand. I can sit back here and I can adjust the focus either by having a monitor there or I have a monitor closer to me or I get a wireless monitor or at least a wireless transmission system so then I can monitor and pull focus from distance, which would be ideal for like talking head stuff with tighter lenses. So yeah, when I, when I do get a follow focus system, I will make a video about that. I want to do a manual focus versus autofocus video because I feel like it's a topic that people who haven't shot video without autofocus probably don't get the whole manual focus thing. And to be fair, that was me for a long time. Like, and like, I still even like, I shoot autofocus on almost every, anything. And I'll even just use like fo the focus standard. So I'll just like press in the joystick on wh whichever camera I'm using. I have that set to like, it'll just focus on whatever's in the like center of the uh, center of the screen. And I use that a lot. And like, I use manual focus sometimes if I need to like, if I'm like shooting through a window or something like that, or, you know, or if, or if I want to do, Either if I want to get to minimum focus or I want to do like a, fo a focus like pull, a focus rack or something like that, then I'll use manual focus. But to be fair, on, on photo lenses, it's just not the same. So it'll be good to actually get used to using manual focus on a fully manual lens. 
And then, oh, that's right, yeah. Oh, there's the creative shoot BTS. I want to do the BTS video, um, you know, shooting the short film. It's not going to be like a, yeah, like I said, it's going to be like a minute long. It's not going to be like a proper short film, like with, you know, a budget of thousands of dollars or a million dollars. It's going to be zero budget, three people that already live here. <laughs> and that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be it. But yeah, I want to do behind the, behind the scenes of that. And it's going to be like, I'm using this lens. This whole film is shot on this lens. And, you know, this camera, this filter, I'll probably use the filter that's on here now. Um, and then, yeah, the other thing, that I, the other video I want to make is a, what is it? Uh, what I call it? So I, I put this in quotation marks in my, like, notes. And it's like, character is an excuse for a bad lens. And <laughs> I kind of want to make that the title. Even though that's not, like, I don't, it's not like a, you know, that's how I feel. Like character is an excuse for bad lens. That's not the case, but it kind of is, you know, <laughs> like it's sort of the, one of those, like, yes, character is a, like lens character. We're talking about like character of lenses is a very talked about, uh, topic. And it's, it's a, it's a, it's a thing that a lot of people want. Like people want lenses with characters. People, a lot of people say like, oh, we don't want this like clean clinical. Like, people say clinical as if it's a bad thing. Like clean these clinical lenses, it's like it's too, too, too clean, too clinical, whatever. But the issue that I have with that, which like, and to be fair, like absolutely, I get it. There's certain certain characteristics that I would like to that I would consider character. That's like yes, absolutely, look for that in your lens, or you know, filter, for example. What a lot of uh, lenses that is like, oh, it's like vintage characteristics or it's like a vintage look, but it's just like, no, it just means it's poorly, like it's got bad glass in it and it's got a heap of chromatic aberration, like, and hella flaring, which to be fair, sometimes maybe you want a lot of flaring or specific types of flaring. That's fine. When you want stuff, when you want characters like that, that that's okay. Like I get that. But a lot of, a lot in marketing about, about these like cheaper lenses in particular is like, it's a bad, it's like a, I, wanna say, I don't want to say a bad lens, but it's a, it's a technically not very good lens. And they advertise it as like, oh, it's a vintage look, right? Or it's got that character, right? A lot of the time it's like chromatic, chromatic aberration, which to be fair, I don't feel like many people really want chromatic aberration. A lot of people are like, oh yeah, it's, you know, it's fine. It's not a, not a big deal. A lot of people don't, probably don't care. Um, but what I would sort of consider, oh, and, and yeah, like I mentioned flaring, focus breathing as well. Like I watched, um, when Andor was on Disney plus, well, it still is on Disney plus when Andor was coming out, Star Wars Andor, I was watching that. And oh my God, there was two things that I noticed with that. That was like, an it annoyed me it was the focus breathing, right? Maybe they did that on purpose. Maybe they chose those lenses because they focus breathed and it was a, narrative choice sure it bothered me though like every time there was a rack focus it just like it was like five mils of zoom and i was like what are you doing calm down and yeah like whatever lenses they used on that show focus breathes so much and i did not like it <laughs> the show was fine but yeah the focus breathing really bothered me say also in that show i noticed there was like there was a lot of continuity errors with like lighting in particular like the sun but anyway, that's kind of unrelated. Um, other, other things like with, with, uh, like character that I feel like they, again, they can be beneficial in a lot of cases if you want, you know, like softness was the edges, for example, like in an anamorphic lens, that's pretty common in a lot of vintage lenses. It's like kind of sharp in the middle, really soft on the edges, which they use that really well. Like Greg Fraser used that really well in the Batman, for example, where like they use like the, they use vintage lenses. They use the Helios 44-2. And basically it's like those things that are out uh, towards the edges of the frame, like out here, like really, even if they're in the same plane, they're really out of focus or they're just like really soft. And that really brings that attention to what is in focus in the middle of the, of the frame. And I get that. That's, that's fine. But, you don't always want that. That's more of a, you should, you should want that. 
you should you should only have that when you want it sort of thing you shouldn't have to deal with that all the time you know um flares distortion and then there's of course there's the bokeh characteristics like with the like the helios 442 that I, that I mentioned those helios lenses like they look cool like the with the swirly bokeh behind like that looks cool same with like anamorphics like anamorphics with that like oval it's like a vertical bokeh and the, and this thing where like, when you rack focus with an anamorphic the way that the focus racks is really cool because the squeeze changes and it's like it's it's weirdly pleasing i don't know i don't know how to describe it and then yeah i mean i'm just like saying everything i'm gonna say in this video um but <laughs> um yeah you got flares like anamorphic flares of course you know you got the horizontal horizontal actually and or they use anamorphics in that and yeah the flares were intense just the horizontal blue flares were just yeah, they were they were there, um, but then like Ari has their like impression filters, which I think are really cool. Which are like, to be fair, like getting Ari signature primes like they're so expensive. I don't even know. If, I don't even know if they sell them or they just rent them. I feel like they probably would sell them. They don't sell the Ari the Alexa sixty five. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure they only rent that. But the yeah the Ari impression filters are really cool. They're like a filter that goes on the back of your lens that changes like foreground and background bokeh characteristics right it's so it's it's so weird i'm also gonna have to change cameras in a sec because this one is a dying and oh wait there, if i wait yeah let's do that um yeah what was i saying yeah the impression filters like it'll it like sh it sharpens the out of focus i don't know how to describe it look if you're interested look up um re impression filters it's really cool how it works where yeah it can change what the foreground and background bokeh does differently with like you know it being sharper or blurrier all while being very out of focus i don't know it's yeah it's crazy but i think that's that's a really cool use of what character should be right i said i know i've noticed i've said right a lot so many times when i'm talking about this stuff anyway um i'm gonna get this other camera back um it's so annoying that it's 720p though to be fair i could just change the battery in this one but i feel like does any does anybody who's here have anything that they want to talk about about this lens, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, um, okay, I'm going to turn this camera off, and, or should I just let it die, let's just let it die, let's see, let's see how long, okay, the, uh, the battery is showing no battery right now, it's got the little, like, X through the, through the battery symbol, and then when it dies, I'll, I'll grab the, I'll grab the battery, I'm going to lower my desk back down to its normal height. <laughs> Uh, oh, I might as well even just grab the camera. Hey, hold on. Give me, give me a second. Okay. Well, okay. Where are we focused? Let's go minimum focus. <laughs> it's so damn close. Where's my eye? There's, there, there we are. All right. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, this is the Nisi Athena, 50 mil, wait, okay, I'm going to, wait, let me turn this camera off, and hope it doesn't freeze the other one, it's going to freeze the other one, okay, we're on this one, we ready, and it hasn't frozen, that, what, why, why do you, wait, is it going to freeze in a sec though, no, we're still good, okay, we're going to make that one bigger, I'm so confused, why are you, why are you doing that, that's so weird, okay, or what I might do actually. Okay, I'm gonna plug this camera. Wait, no. Oh, then it'll be. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna plug this camera in via the HDMI and the cam link. So give me a second, I'm just gonna unplug it.
Hello? No? Wait, wait, oh, uh, that one. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me... Wait, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Hold on. We're back. We're coming. Uh, Cam Link. Ah. OBS, why are you doing this? Wait, hold on. Let... Ah, oh, this, this is annoying. Okay. I, um... <laughs> Forgot to turn off info display via HDMI. That's annoying. Hold on. Let me... I'll fix it. I'm going to fix it. Give me a sec. Uh, you, you can see it anyway. So... <laughs> okay, there we go. And now, I don't think... See, I can turn gamma assist on and off, but it doesn't do anything here. So, I'm just going to switch to... s Um... Uh, where are we? Where is oh, there? Let's go to a Cinetone. And we're a little bit overexposed. F2? F25? No. That 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 should be okay. Uh F2, yeah, F2 is fine. Alright, anyway. Me see Athena 50 mil. Oh, wait. Oh. Well, okay, one of the biggest things that I've, like, <laughs> I've found annoying since, like, using filters, because I haven't, I've really only been using filters other than, like, the uh, the recon, the Polypro recon. Like, it hasn't been that long. To be fair, all that was all I had until I got the Nisi Swift. So, yeah. Oh, I can put... No. Yeah, this one. I'm going to put it back on there. Whoa. Oh, I could... Wait. Oh, no, I don't have a thing. Damn it. I was going to say I could just put this camera where this camera was, but I can't. Oh, this camera's on 11% as well. Wow. And this has been plugged in the whole time. I guess there's not much power going through... Through the uh, USB port that that was... That was on. Anyway. Oh, Okay. What? Ooh. Hold on. Eh, no, I won't, I won't worry about plugging it in. I'm going to end the stream soon anyway. Does anybody who is here, there's seven people here. I appreciate y'all watching. Um, anyone have anything they want to ask about? Any, and does anyone have any questions about the Athena 50 mil? Oh, that's so annoying. I just found this out. I just okay. So I just tried to take out the uh, drop-in filter. Wait, let's let's do this. I just tried to take out the drop-in filter. Can you focus? Yeah, and uh, take it out, and it hits the cage. Like it just bumps into the cage. So I can't literally can't take the drop-in filter out on this cage. And I feel like it'd be the same on this cage. That is super annoying. Okay, you can focus on me now. What are you doing? That sucks. Nisi, what is up with that? Because, like, yeah, the drop-in filter is a great, great feature. But if I can't take it out without taking the lens off, what's the point? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I feel like the, the more common use case of the drop-in filter is more of a, like, maybe you have one... Of a, of a certain type of filter and you know you change lenses so you change lenses you put that filter in that other lens like you're not going to have you know let's say like you're using the, the full set of these which is like five lenses six lenses seven lenses well technically it's actually seven now yeah not that they've announced i don't know if they've announced the 135 and the uh, 40. they haven't hidden it. it definitely exists they took it to the show at um in the uk but let's say you have a set of six lenses you're not going to have six of the same filter. So, yeah, I would imagine you would either just be using a matte box where you just unclip the matte box, put it on the next one. But even then, you got to unscrew the little adapter thing because this is a seven, is an 80 millimeter, like, outer diameter, not a 95, which is, like, pretty common for, like, clamp-on matte boxes. But, like, yeah, if I wanted to... If I was swapping between, like, the 50 and I was like, all right, time for the 14, let's take the... Take that off. All right, let's also swap the filter. Put the filter in the in the other lens, and then put the other lens on. Like that makes sense. 
Also, so you can see, uh, you can just get all the dust in the, in there. Here's the. Oh wait, let's let's turn this off real quick. All right, we here. Focus, cool. So that there is glass in here. It goes right in there. I find it hard to like get it in the right, like angle, right? So in there, and then it's it's locked in there. Like now, I imagine that probably compromises this sort of like weather sealing. I'm not sure if it's actually actually is weather sealed, but yeah. And then yeah, if we close the aperture down, that's that's so cool. This, thing, this is a thing you can't do with <laughs> photography lenses because they're focused by wire, whereas you know like actual mechanical like manual focus. That's so cool. Anyway, that is a huge like image circle. Right? If it seems so much bigger than like Yeah, look at that. Oh, I reckon I reckon I know why. Wait, where are we? Alright, so you can't really see it in the light that well, but this one is round. Whereas this one is It is round, but it's got like cutouts so it's basically rectangular. So this is gonna be more like usable on wider, like bigger, like, um, where are we going that way? Like on taller aspect ratio. Couldn't think of the word aspect ratio on taller aspect ratio cameras. Cause like this isn't a Sony lens. Like it has an e, it has an E mount, but you know, they obviously make it with other mounts. They make it with PL mounts and there's other full frame cameras with different size sensors, for example, like, actually, is there? What, um, are there any, like, four by three full frame sensors? I feel, and I feel like cine, a lot of cinema cameras ha don't even have, like, this is a three by, three by two, like, the, these, all these Sony cameras are three by two aspect ratio sensor. But then they only shoot in 16 by 9 so they just cut off the top and bottom, which I don't get why. But a lot of these other, like, proper, like, more proper cinema cameras, like Reds, for example, and I think even the Canons, like the C70 and stuff, they have, like, probably not 17 by 9 probably more like a... What would it be? Like a 1.9... Which would be similar, like, almost 2 to 1, be like 1.9 to 1. So it's like they're, they're not 16 by 9. They're a little bit narrower. Wait, one no, it wouldn't be 190 then. Wait. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. This uh, this camera is at 4%. So when it gets uh, like it's about to die, we'll end the stream. If anyone has any last last questions. Um, by the way, short film when... Um, soon. Also, actually, yeah, fun, fun news. I should be, like, I, I double-checked again, uh, like, a couple weeks ago, but I will be ACing on a short film next month. Yeah, in about a month. Like, like apparently it's shooting late next month. Um, there was, like, a crew call sort of thing that I got sent, and I messaged the producer and was like, I'm interested in doing anything in the camera department, DP, AC, operator, whatever you need. And they're like, we already have a DP, but I'm sure he'll, he'll uh, appreciate all the help he can get. So uh, you can be an AC. I was like, cool, I'll be an AC. Nice. So I'll get on my first like actual set that isn't just me running everything, which would be cool. Cause like, I want to, I want to get on a set and like, I want to shoot some stuff with other people that is not just me doing everything. I want to just be like one of the people that like even being like DP, AC, operator, there's sort of like DP and operator would probably be my two like main roles, but yeah, not sure how I got here or who you are, but congrats on the lens. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, you kind of, unless you were here a while ago, you kind of missed the whole unboxing and the whole talking about it part, but appreciate you being here anyway. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts on the lens or questions. I got 2% on this battery right now. To be fair, I could just replace... Actually, hold on. I'm going to 
I'm gonna replace the battery in this in case we keep going. Where? Yeah. Should I, should I give you all an ad? No, I'm not gonna give you an ad. All right, new battery in the FX30. We can keep going if we need to. But yeah, I'm excited, excited about that. I don't really know anything about it, like whatsoever. So I'm just hoping that I get told soon what's happening. And I, I don't, I hope it's not just a, I right, show up on set and it's like, I right, go do your AC job. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Cause I would, yeah, I would definitely like to know what's happening beforehand. But yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun to be on set, meet some, meet some people in the industry. Cause that's the thing. I don't know anyone in the industry, um, in my area or just in general at all. So yeah, it'll be cool to get on set, do some ACing. Uh, maybe that'll include focus pulling. So maybe I need to get uh, get some practice in manual focusing with this thing. So yeah, and then obviously like, I mean, AC is also like, you know, build cameras and, you know, lens changes and just to handle stuff with the, ca with the camera that like, you know, the operator or the DP will need help with. And yeah, so I'm excited about that. I have no idea what camera we're shooting it on, but yeah. Exciting. Never had a Cine lens or anything close, so no question for me. Actually picked up my first Sony a few months back. Okay, I'm gonna, hold on. I'm gonna really quickly, I'm gonna finish reading your question in a sec. I'm just gonna quickly switch cameras again um, because this camera is dying. Wait. Yeah, hold on, all right. Uh, actually, because first of Sony, started video because of how well it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you, you've got the camera for, um, for talk. Oh, there's no lens. Ah, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm still here. Don't go anywhere. That was this. Yep. Professional streamer. That's me. Um, okay. Are we, are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good. Okay. Hold on. We here. I'm going to just switch. Okay. 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 Hold on. Ah, too many exposed sensors and lenses. I need to cover all this up. Okay, get rid of that. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> um, yeah, wait, so you got... I'm going to put this... Wait, where... There, there's that. Okay. So you got your camera... You got a Sony for photography. What Sony did you get? What, um, what camera? Hold on. I'm going to put this on this tripod. We good. So you got a camera for photography and then you're like, oh, it's actually pretty good at video. Let's do that. What, do, yeah, what, uh, what Sony did you get? What, um, what camera? Let me guess. Should I guess? It's, um, how good it is for video. You got it for photos. Is it like an A6600 or something? I don't think it'd be, I, I'm not going to guess it's an A6700. Or did you just go straight up full frame? You just like A7 IV straight away. First camera. <laughs> I mean, the A7 IV was my second camera, but I knew I wanted it pretty, pretty soon into getting, like getting into cameras and stuff. Cause I originally got into cameras through streaming actually. Um, been doing photography since 2020. I was working off old and Nikon and finally upgraded to an A7 R2. Okay, A7R2, a little bit of an older one. He's having a Black Friday. Yeah, Black Friday sale, fair enough. Trade-in bonus, only paid 17 bucks. Nice. Black Friday sale and trade-in bonus. That's that's pretty solid. Yeah, nice. A7R2, though, that's that's pretty old. They're up to the A7R5. So, I um, I actually don't know anything about those, like, older... Like, I didn't, I didn't get into cameras until... Well, I got my first camera in... Well, what was it now? 20, 22? Was it only two years ago? Yeah. Wow. It's been a, a lot has happened in two years. That's crazy. So I got my, yeah, how, basically how I got into all this is like, 
when in 2020 I got back into gaming, so I like, started playing games again, and then I was getting a lot really into it. And my friend got a PC, and I was like, oh, I'll get a PC, and so I got a PC, and I was like, oh, I have a PC. Why not stream? So I started streaming, just using like my phone as a camera and whatever. Oh, that's right, because like on, when I was playing on my PlayStation, I actually like would make clips of gaming and make TikToks. So I'd like post on TikTok of like my gaming clips and stuff like that. And yeah, so then I got a PC and I started streaming. And then as I like started upgrading my streaming gear, like getting, a, I got a microphone, I made a video about it. I got another microphone, made a video about it. Got like, get all this stuff, made videos about it, got a stream deck. And I like started making videos and I was like, I kind of like making videos. And I was like, I want to get a, I want to get a camera. So it was like for strip, like mainly just for streaming. It's like, oh yeah, take thumbnails and you know, maybe do a little bit of photography on the side sort of thing. But yeah, and I originally just got the camera almost purely for streaming and then also just like to make videos with because I'd made a few videos on my phone. Actually, my highest viewed video on my channel was shot on my phone, which it's not a good video, but it has 10,000 views. I'm like, what? Calm down. I think it was just because it was about to, actually this monitor, the monitor that's on my right here. It's about that monitor this is when I first got it. Um... Yeah, definitely going to have to upgrade as I want to get more seriously into video, but prior to this camera hadn't even been a thought in my mind. That's, yeah, that's totally fair. Streaming to filmmaker pipeline goes so crazy, seeing lots of good creators stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Um, but yeah, so then, like, I just got more and more into the old, like, I started, thinking, you know, I'd go on photo walks, do some POV photography videos, because I was watching that at the time. Like, I got a little bit into photography, but I got much more into the video sort of side of things and just, like, I really like one I really like the gear side of it like I like cameras and lenses and all the gear that goes with it but I also like enjoy I enjoy shooting I enjoy the like actual capturing of video sort of thing and you know figuring out stuff and making making things work and lighting things and all that sort of stuff um so yeah but yeah like it's it's crazy to think that like if for some reason I you know if COVID didn't happen, I probably wouldn't have done all of this and got into this career. Like, crazy to think, because, like, I started gaming because I was stuck at home for months. So, all this led to, you know, companies sending me $2,000 lenses. Like, <laughs> like that's crazy. Well, company. Like, uh, this is the only... I bought all my other lenses. <laughs> but, like, just think about it. Like, that's crazy. But that's so true. I feel like a lot of people did start streaming around that sort of same time too. A lot of people like really got into streaming that time because everyone was like gaming a lot and like everyone was stuck at home not doing much. So, you know, a lot of people started streaming and then maybe, yeah, there's probably a lot of people like me that where, you know, they got into filmmaking, let's say. I've also been shooting on film a lot and some of these vintage lenses are really good for video. I'm thinking of buying a better. That's, that's fair. That's, that's actually, that's one thing I've never done is really shot on film. Like, I don't get film. I don't get the appeal for film. Like, a lot, a lot of people, I know a lot of people love it. It's like, it's a, it's a whole thing. I don't get it, though. I like the new technology and the fancy features and, like, you know, I, I like, yeah. But I can understand, like, you know, going for the look of film. But, yeah, I've never actually, like, shot on film. COVID was both a blessing and a curse for a lot of different reasons. I think because yeah, absolutely, hundred percent agree. But yeah, vintage lenses, vintage lenses are like really, really common for like video sort of thing. Like, like um, like iron glass adapters. The they they like rehouse Soviet like vintage Soviet lenses, like the Helios forty four two that I was talking about before. Um, if anyone was here, and they they have like a set. There, it was like, you know, it's like, you know, the 44.2 and another Helios lens and like a few, di a few bu bunch of different focal lengths and they're like rehoused and everything. And they actually shot, um, Greg Fraser shot Dune 2 on these iron glass lenses and some, and some Ari's as well. I think there was, there was a few like Ari vintage lenses as well, but yeah, like vintage lenses, they shoot, on, they like, they use on movies sort of thing, like big, amazing movies, like. If Dune 2 doesn't win Best Cinematography of the Oscars next year, like, something else <laughs> better go absolutely crazy with it to beat that. Because the cinematography in that movie was amazing. Is amazing. 
But yeah, like Greg, Greg Fraser's used the Helios 44-2, a not very good, like technically not a very good lens. In It was used in the Batman um, and yeah, of course in Dune too. And yeah, a meaning film for photography. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, no, I know. I, I knew what you meant with uh, film photography. Grounds me in photography, never shoot in film or video. Stick to emulate. Yeah, that's totally fair. Way too unforgiving for video. That is totally fair. Um, yeah, but even then, like, I've never shot film photography. Actually, even stuff like this. So, for those unaware, this is a. Uh, Oh, let's where, focus. So, I'm I'm friends with the one of the founders or the like the two founders of this. I saw them the other day. Um, this is a digital camera that is meant to basically emulate everything about the disposable film experience, right? And it's like, and I've I actually shot like I've shot a bunch of stuff for them. I shot an event for them actually the other day. That was um my most recent sort of project. And I shot their Kickstarter video and everything like, and I'm friends with the guys and it's like, it's not a product for me, for example, like if you want the experience of shooting film and, but with the convenience and the, not all the waste and all that sort of stuff, it's like, yeah, this is a great idea. It's just not for me. Cause like, I don't really care about the experience of shooting film. That's not something that really appeals to me. Like on the experience of shooting on a cinema lens and a cinema camera, like, <laughs> you know, but yeah, stuff like that. Like, I, I mean, I bought two of these to support my friend and you know, I've shot a bunch of stuff for him, but yeah, this, this, like, I'm not the, the, uh, target customer. That's not the right word. Ideal customer. That's not the, I'm not like the target audience for a product like this, right? I can still appreciate it. Like I, I get it. Like it's, it's fun to use. It's just like, I just don't use it that much cause it's not really for me, you know? Um, but yeah, fil film photography. I know. And, and like film emulations too. Actually I got asked, I got an email from a uh, Dehancer asking if I want to make a, a review video about their, you know, about their plugin, which is like a film emulation sort of thing for a post where you can like, make videos look like it was shot on film sort of thing. It was like, eh, like that's not really, I didn't end up doing it because I just didn't. And also it was like, I would have got commission on stuff, but then it's also, it's like, can I call it a review if I get commission? If I'm basically, so if like, if I say it's good, then more people sign up and then I get paid. So I didn't end up doing it, but like, it's a cool idea. But again, like, like me, like I don't really care if my stuff looks like film. I'm not trying to make it look like film. I'm just trying to make it look good. That, if that makes sense. I mean, you have, of course, you have like diffusion filters and other stuff that you can do in post, of course, to make stuff look kind of like how film does with its, with its imperfections, with its grain, with its, you know, halation, all that stuff like that. I mean, film can be better in a lot of ways when it comes to like dynamic range and stuff. Um, film is generally, generally has better dynamic range than you know, any digital camera, I think. Like good film at least will. Definitely think there are time and place for it. Mostly shoot digital for cost effective reasons. And like you said about more modern tech, you have more room for creative freedom. Exactly, yeah. It's like when, yeah, if your gear just works, then you don't have to worry about ma like making sure the gear works and then making sure everything else works. You just have to make sure everything else works if you know the gear will work sort of thing. And like, oh wow, it's 10.30 already. Damn. Um, I might, I might have to end the stream here, guys. <laughs> I did not think I was going to stream for two hours. Um, but yeah, if anyone is here and feels like they would uh, want to become a member, there are, there are benefits to becoming a member. Like it's not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like oversell it and say, it's like, oh, you should become a member because you get so much stuff. If you want to support me, it's probably more thing. If you want to support me financially, there's a, the become a member thing. There are some benefits. You get videos early and uh, some other, other little things, or I'm open to suggestions, but that's there. Um, if anyone has any other questions, 
let me know. If you're watching this in the future, as in after it's finished, thank you for watching. Make sure everyone, who, everyone here, make sure you subscribe. Go watch some other videos. Do that. Um, and I'm going to go to bed because it is 1030. Um, there's been like eight, five to five to eight, like consistently viewers on here. Pretty like, yeah, we were like above five, like the entire time. We was like, yeah, pretty decent. F 49 views, average 12 minutes. Sure. Was that strategy sub to look forward to upcoming vids? Do you have any social psych for Yeah, um, oh wait. Yes, yes I do. Can, oh no, I deleted it. I mean, um, yeah, just, um, it's like, everything's just like my name. So Remy Leonard, um, there should be actually links on, on my YouTube page. I'm pretty sure there's links to Instagram and TikTok, I think. But yeah, um, I'm f relatively active on Instagram and TikTok. Any, anything that I post, um, like shorts on YouTube shorts, I also post on Instagram and TikTok. I occasionally post stories, for example, on um, Instagram. But yeah, feel free to uh, look me up on Instagram and TikTok. Subscribe to this channel. Um, new video, actually, new video went out yesterday. There was a video about SLog3 yesterday. So, if you actually, Christian, this might be for you. Uh, if you shoot in SLog3, you're interested in color grading. I have a few videos, actually, just in general, if you, uh, SLog3, I have a few videos recently about SLog3. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm just promoting everything. Um, but yeah, I got some, got some videos coming. I got to edit a video later this week that'll go out on Sunday. I post the videos every Sunday, by the way. I don't usually stream, but you know, if I have things that I might, if I have things like an, un, like an unboxing of a cinema lens, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a live stream. But yeah, thank you all for being here. Christian, sounds good, have a good, yep, have a good rest of your day and night as well. I'm gonna go, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm excited, this is cool. Nisi, send me the rest of them. Okay, bye. <laughs>